But out of everything, you're my favorite. I tried a lot of things, but you're my favorite. <laughs> How y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is Rick. You're watching Surface Town. I'm actually at school right now, so Gino's not in this video. I kind of want to get this out the way. So, um, but today we are talking about music, you know, because I love music. If y'all don't know by now, I love music a lot. So, um, we're mid-July, you know, um, we're about to go into the second half of the year. We're actually already in the second half of the year. So, I was just reflecting one day about um, the way music has been going this year. Um, so, I, I want to put this, this video together about uh, the best albums of 2016 so far, um, based on, you know, what we've seen this year. So first I'm gonna start off with the beginning of the year, which was Rihanna's Anti, you know. Um, Anti was released in January, I believe, like the last week of January, or something like that. Um, exclusively the title. Now, because I know this is because I actually signed up for Tidal to get this album. And it was cool how it happened because I was just on Twitter and they were like, Rihanna's giving her album away for free on Tidal. And I was like, I don't have Tidal. And then they had it so, uh, where well, you can sign up, you get like a month free and then you get the, the album Anti like on your phone and like it came with like a download file and everything. So it was pretty dope. So I got to experience title, you know, kind of that way. Um, and the one month actually turned out to be like almost three months. Cause like they gave me another month uh, free, you know, to kind of, you know, let me experience it a little more. So that was very dope. And I'm still thinking about getting title because they got this uh, thing where like, if you're a college student, you get half off of the regular price, which is um, like $5 a month. So I think that was pretty cool. I kind of like Tidal. It kept me up to date on like the new singles that were dropping. So I like that. Um, as far as anti goes though, um, <sighs> Rihanna, Rihanna, you, you can see her growth in this album. Um, Unapologetic. <laughs> no, Good Girl Gone Bad is my favorite Rihanna album. Uh, then, it's unapologetic. And then I think it's talk that talk or something like that. But anti, it was, it was, it was still Rihanna, but it was definitely her trying some new stuff. You know, she always, she always favors to both crowds. You know, she's very mainstream, but she's very urban. So you got songs like me to me. And then you got uh, songs like um, same old mistakes, which is actually uh, taken from uh, another artist. So it was, I had to find that out later on, but I was like, wait a minute, I'm over here thinking this is Rihanna, and then it turns out to be another artist, but you know, it was still pretty cool because without Rihanna, I probably wouldn't have ever heard that song, um, Same Old Mistakes. You know, so she she definitely knows how to play with both crowds and, and then with work with Drake, becoming like one of the best singles of this year so far as far as charting goes. So, you know, Anti is definitely, would I, um, I don't know where I would rank this as far as Rihanna albums, but it's definitely an album that you should definitely, you know, give a try. You know, um, is it one of my favorite albums? No, but I, de I definitely think she, she did take some risks. Um, James Joint is probably my favorite song, and I hate that it's so short because that song is just it's so good, it's so good. So, um, Shout out to Rihanna. I almost went to her concert in Atlanta, but due to scheduling conflicts, I couldn't go. So hopefully I'll be able to see her in concert once, you know. I just I just want to do that. Uh, then the next album was uh, Kanye West's uh, Life of Pablo, which features uh, a song with Chance the Rapper. Uh, Kendrick Lamar is on the album. He even got Andre 3000 on the album. So, you know, he has a lot of people working in that album. And I think Kanye West, this is way better than Yeezus. <sighs> Listen, take 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 y'all back to 2013 when he dropped Yeezus, the same week that Mac Miller dropped uh uh watching the watching the movie with the sound off or something like that. 
and then uh, J. Cole's Born Center all dropped the same week. And it was like, okay, a lot of people were going between Kanye West and um, J. Cole, but I was actually a Mac Miller fan, so I just went on and threw him in there too. But it was like, it was no competition. Kanye West only like won that as far as sales goes, because of his name, we had no lead single. We had nothing really going off of Yeezus. And then we get Yeezus and it was like, what is, what, what is this? Now I know I wasn't the only one feeling that way, you know, so I was definitely gravitated more towards Born Center and Mac Mill Miller's album at that time. So it was kind of refreshing to, to hear Life of Pablo coming off of that album. Cause I was like, come on Kanye West, you gotta do something. You know, last year he had All Day and then he did the collaboration with Rihanna. So um, this album was def definitely an improvement, definitely some joints on there. Of course, we all know about Famous, you know, and that whole controversy with um, Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian, that whole thing about Taylor Swift approving of him talking about her in the song, but not really knowing what, she, what he was going to say. But um, if I'm sure if she really knew what he was gonna say, he, she would not have approved him to talk about her like that, even though really he could have did it anyways, because who really calls people to talk about them? I don't know. But um, so Life of Pablo, that, that was it. Um, out of ranking, out of my favorite Kanye West albums, mm, I, I, I gravitate towards like the dropout and, and stuff like that and more so. Uh, this is something about Kanye West, I just, I can't mess with no more. I just, I don't know. It's kind of hard to take, you know, the way the media perceives him and his music and not get them like intertwined and feel some type of way. That's just how I feel about it. But it was definitely an improvement from, from music, so yeah. And then after that, I don't really know which order I'm going in, but I'm just kind of naming the albums as I go. Um, we get Gwen Stefani's This Is What The Truth Feels Like. Now, I put this album in the list because, you know, Gwen Stefani, she's a legend. She, well, she's definitely an icon. I'll say that she's an icon because I didn't even know Gwen Stefani had been around for so long. I had to do my history on her. You know, of course, we know her from Hollaback Girl and uh, This Ish Is Bananas. B A N A N A S. I swear I learned how to spell bananas from that song. <laughs> oh man, but um, so we had that, and but I had to do my history about No Doubt, and I actually found out that some of the songs I already knew was from No Doubt. Like hey, 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 hey. I did not know that was Gwen Stefani, but I mean. Gwen Stefani goes back. And so, you know, her, she had two albums uh, in the last decade solely. So this was her third album. This is what the truth feels like featuring. Why you wanna go on like I don't know, y'all check it out. If y'all haven't heard her album. Gwen Stefani, she's she's definitely unique. She's different. She, want, she never tried to be like anybody else. I always give her that. And quite frankly, this was her first number one as a solo artist, you know, so she joins artists, you know, that have been able to get a number one with group and solo-y, and not many artists have been able to do that. So she was able to do that, so I definitely had to check out that album, because Gwen Stefani, like, come on now. Just because an artist gets old doesn't mean you have to stop liking them, you know? And she has some nice songs on there. Um, my favorite song, um, I Sung at the Beginning. Uh, you're my favorite. Um, send Me a Picture. Uh, uh, make me like you. And she had a song with Fetty Wap on there. You know, I really don't mess with Fetty Wap, but I mean, she put him on the album. So definitely give that a listen if you haven't. Um, then next we, which one should I do? I think I'm gonna do Lemonade first. Then we get Beyonce. Now Beyonce, she, hold on. Sensors. <laughs> now, Beyonce, she dropped her sixth studio album entitled Lemonade um, earlier this year, right after the passing of Prince. 
it kind of all happened at the same time. So I was like, oh, you know, you can take the spotlight off Prince and it was supposed to be all about Prince. I mean, it still was all about Prince, but I swear like iTunes and Billboard for like a good month, it was all about them two. So, you know, but anyways, she did the HBO special. Um, if you hadn't seen Lemonade, the, the visual, uh, the movie, whatever you want to call it, you, I don't know what you're doing with your life because it's like, it was pretty cool. Now, comparing it to Beyonce back in 2013, I was actually looking at some of the videos and it was like a throwback. Like, I, I remember when I was in high school and when it dropped, it was like, it was kind of like a throwback for me. I was like, oh my God, like, we're looking three years behind. Like, it's definitely two different vibes. Beyonce's Beyonce, I will compare to Janet Jackson's Janet because they have more similarities than differences. They were both the ladies' fifth studio album. Um, and they both kind of expressed themselves very sexually, very sexually. Janet at a time, she did it at a time where nobody was really doing it. I mean, you had Madonna's on she had. Um, <laughs> but you know, like Janet said, you know, what she does always had some class to it. You know, so Janet, she always um, expressed herself sexually since then. Of course, Beyonce, she's always been sexy. We've always talked about her butt and whatnot. So, but on this album, she just like, she, she put it all out there. If y'all haven't seen Partition, the video, I don't know what you're doing with your life. My favorite song off the album is Below. Um, but yeah, so, but Lemonade, it was a different perspective. She wasn't um, gravitating towards the sex more. She was more talking about social issues and, and, and relationship problems and Becky with the good hair and all that stuff. But yeah, so, um, what I, where would I rank Lemonade out of Beyonce's albums? I don't know, to be honest with you. I would say, uh, her debut album is probably my favorite or my second favorite. But Beyonce, the subtitled album would be up there at, at the top two. Lemonade would probably be like four or something, number four off of the six albums she's had, I don't know. But you comment, you know, where does, Be where does Beyonce's Lemonade rank? Is it too early to rank the album? Is, you know, as far as her whole catalog. But yeah, um, she broke records as usual with this one. I thought she was gonna sell a million copies the first week because it was like the hype that came off of her self-titled album. She had no promotion. It was on like three days for the first week and she still sold like over half a million. So it was like, Lemonade is gonna sell a million the first week, but it didn't. I was like, I was very surprised that it didn't do that. And then sure enough, the next album that we talk about, Drake's Views. Um, now, Drake's Views is probably Drake's best album. Take that back. <laughs> Take that back. I would say Nothing Was The Same is my favorite Drake album. Nothing Was The Same was my favorite Drake album. But the, the media is probably going to say Take Care is Drake's best album. But I would say Another Was The Same is my favorite Drake album, and then Views. Because Views, it just, it was like the perfect balance of bars and just real like chill vibe music. You know, and Drake, Drake kind of does that well. I feel like he puts out way too much content. I did that in my last video where I talked about is Drake the greatest of all time? Y'all could go check that out. But I definitely think that he he's given way too much content out at too fast. But still enough views sold a million. It outsold uh Wayne's best selling album the first week. And you know, he's, he's still breaking records. He was number one along with One Dance, I was number one. So Drake, is he, 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 he's exceeded the limit I thought he was gonna go to. I thought he would have been started, you know. But he definitely exceeded like my expectations. Um, so yeah, we have that album. It is still probably gonna end up being in the top 
three best selling albums of the year, I think. Even though we still got plenty of year to, to come, I think that you're not gonna get too much better than Drake's views as far as sales go. You know, he had Hotline Bling, One Dance, Controller, that's my favorite song. Hype, Grammys, that's another one of my favorite songs with Future. Um, so yeah, 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 he definitely has a lot of hits, but I mean, come on, it's Drake, he always has hits. So after that, we get, do, 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 do. I think it's so cute, and I think it's so sweet. We get Megan Trainers, thank you, um, which is her sophomore release. I think it's too soon to have a sophomore album, but I mean, hey, music, you can't, I don't know. But anyways, the lead single was entitled No. Um, and I don't know if anybody ever thought this, but I believe No is a song that would have been on Pink's Misunderstood. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. If you listen to Pink's Misunderstood, Pink had a whole different sound than she does now. But it's the same song. That. And it irked me that I don't think nobody else really, really thought about that, but it sounds just like the songs that she made back then. But I loved it. <laughs> so, you know, and then she she has um, Me Too, you know. I love you, I want to be Me Too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I definitely gravitated more towards this album than her debut album. I just thought it was a little too soon for her to do a sophomore album, especially when she had that EP. But I mean, it is what it is. Um, she's all about that bass. So yeah. And then we get into my favorite album this year so far. Now listen, you guys may not agree with me, but this is just me. My favorite album of 2016 so far is Ariana Grande's Dangerous Woman. Now, a lot of y'all are like, what? But yeah, like, I've been a fan of Ariana Grande since her debut. You know, I remember she was on Victorious, I didn't really know her then. And then she was in Sam and Cat, kind of watched that. But then she came out with The Way with uh, Mac Miller. And I was like, she sounds like Mariah Carey. <laughs> And, and she did, and she did. Then I later found out that The Way was written by Seven Streeter, and I love Seven Streeter, and so it all kind of intertwined, and, and Ariana Grande has became like my number one. She really has. Like, My Everything is still her best album to me, but Dangerous Woman is like, I don't know. I just feel like Ariana Grande isn't utilizing her talent to her ability. I feel her on the decline more so than the then the uprise, like Ariana Grande has talent. You look at Katy Perry, you look at uh, Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato, hell, even Rihanna. And Ariana Grande can sing way better than all of them. Mind you, I just mentioned what, four ladies or so that do not dance. Okay, so if you're not dancing and you can't really sing like that, then what are you doing and why are you selling so many records? I'm not throwing no shade, I'm just making a point. Like, come on now, Ariana Grande can sing her ass off. She really can, and I feel like she needs to get her black fans. I don't think she has, like, she needs to go over the BT Awards is what I'm saying. Like, she has really, really good vocal ability that the black people will respect from her, but I think she's just so mainstream that, that she's not really doing BT Awards and Soul Train Awards and stuff like that, when I really think she could, like, and she should utilize that while she can because she's definitely way more talented than just some mainstream pop radio hit me. But Dangerous Woman had Dangerous Woman, uh, Greedy, I love that song, uh, Jason song, I love that song. Side to Side with Nicki Minaj, I love that. Let Me Love You, like my favorite song off the album with Lil Wayne. Um, uh, the song with Macy Gray, like come on now. Macy Gray, like, classic. But yeah, that, that has to be my favorite song. I mean, my favorite album of this year so far. Um, And then we had uh, Drizzy's debut album. Um, And then we had Schoolboy Q's fourth album that came out. And so we kind of get some more hip hop now. I feel like hip hop was kind of missing. We had Kendrick Lamar drop his um, Untitled Unreleased, but that wasn't, I, 
that was more of like just some unreleased tracks, you know, that wasn't like a full studio album. But it was still number one, so you gotta mention that one. Um, but yeah, it's like, rap is missing this year. I remember like 2013, there were so many good rap albums. And, and, and this year it's kind of like, you know, maybe we'll get some, some more rap albums later on in the year. You know, I know Chance the Rapper dropped a mixtape. Um, where's the album at? But I mean, hey. Um, but yeah, so we're getting some more hip hop. Dreezy, I, I really do like her album. I became a fan after that album. Especially that song with Close To You by T-Pain. That's probably my favorite song off the album. Like she, I didn't know how good she was. She got it. Um, in the ass fast. In the ass fast. <laughs> That's my. <sighs> but anyway, yeah. So um, that was a, that was about it as far as my list goes of best album. You guys tell me what your favorite album was so far this year. Why did you agree with my list? Did your favorite? And just let me know. What do you expect from this year? Who do you expect to to drop a surprise album? What are we gonna get? You guys, let me know. Is Jay Z coming out with an album this year? I don't know. Let me know, but uh, go ahead, subscribe. Uh, we'll have some more videos coming. Check out our other videos, our, our singles reviews that we did. Um, thumbs us up, share this, follow us on social media. I'm Rick, you just watch Surface Sound. We'll see you later.